Hello, welcome to my 3D Amazon channel. In this video tutorial, uh, we are going to learn how to do PBR workflow. So PBR workflow is nothing but uh, physically based rendering materials, uh, which Substance uh, Painter has a lot of materials in it. Um, this PBR workflow has been widely used in VFX studios as well as in gaming studios to achieve photorealism. So in a nutshell, um, in a nutshell, to explain this better, I found this image from internet and I, I give the credit to the user, but I don't know uh, the like the person who created this. So you can see this is base color uh, or the diffuse map or the color map. It depends upon the studio what kind of tag they use. So here it's called albedo, the metalness and roughness. So the metalness means, um, so in substance it's called metallic map. So if your metallic map is one that is white it will be metallic in your surface as you can see here so if it's black it's not and for the roughness is how rough your materials are so as a result you get all this okay, let's do this so what i did i grabbed a geo from one of the models i created um, in my uh, for my tutorial in uh, my child so i grabbed a piece of it and I went and created the big mesh maps for uh, the materials and it has in all the maps in the XX uh, slot. And I'm going to close it. And I picked one of the material from the smart materials and uh, it's this one uh, with uh, steel painted scraped dirty. So you can see, I'm just hitting C. Um, you can see there's a base color. That's the albedo, you could see. And there's a metallic map there you could see. So wherever there is white, in my materials you could see there's you know metallic in it so this is my roughness map you could see how rough the materials are and i don't have normal right so i'm gonna go back so let's go and export this textures so since we are doing pbr i'm gonna say pbr metallic roughness so this gives you know uh the maps for me so there's base color roughness metallic normal light and emissive i don't need emissive either normal height, but I'm just going to export it because it's not going to take that much time and I'm going to set it to EXR uh, and I'm going to set it to uh, 1024 to and I'm going to also pick my path where it need to be exported and I'm going to select and I'm going to export it and and export it is done so all the exporting has been done so uh, let's go to Maya so I have my Maya open, it's the same piece and so I went to Redshift and I went to Lights and I created Dome Light and I plugged in the exact edge area map what I used in my Redshift. Let's go to the environment map here. You could see I used the Tomoko, Tomoko Studio. Tomoko Studio. So you could see I have this edge area map. You can also do that from uh, the Substance uh, Painter file. So I went here so you could see uh, it will sit on uh, your program files, substance, painter, resources, shelf, and go to algorithmic environment maps and pick the same um, same HDR map. So let's go and render it. I'm just going to render this. You can see um, I haven't created the material yet. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to minimize this. Let's apply a redshift material to it. A redshift, redshift material. I'm just going to demo. Okay, so let's, you know, render it. So you could see it's rendering the, uh, the base material since we haven't plugged in the map. So what I'm going to do now so I'm going to go to my folder. Let's plug in the maps now. So I'm going to go to the red uh, hypershade. So I'm going to map that material here. So the easiest way I can do, I want the base color, I want the metallic, and I want the roughness. So click and drag and throw it in the hypershade. So there you go. You can see the base color, uh, the roughness map. The base color is here. the shader so so the base color and the roughness map I have the roughness map so I left everything default just leave as default since it's a metal you can you know change it to GGX 
that works really good for um, metallic materials let's render it as you could see I haven't plugged the metallic map yet but like I got like you know quite you know same as what we have here You could see the roughness or the little everything is the same to see this better what i'm going to do i'm going to go here so i'm going to hide my environmental map so let's plug in the metallic map now so how do we plug the metallic map we don't see a slot here right so go to the funnel type and i'm changing to metalness you see there's a reflectivity sort and metalness start so i'm going to plug in my metallic in the metallic uh, metalness uh, slot so I kept the reflectivity to default because we are changing anything here, but I'll show you an example. So let's render this now. Okay, I couldn't find my render view. There you go. I also had the environment map. Now you could see we got the exact one-to-one -one from Substance Painter to Redshift. You could see the materials are literally the same. Okay, let's do a close-up so you guys can see. I'm going to Redshift Render View and just do that. So meanwhile, I go to Substance Painter and I rotate my map and I kept So you can literally see we achieve the exact material that has been transferred from uh, Substance Painter to um, my Redshift. And this is how we extract materials from um, Substance Painter to um, my Redshift. And it's easier. You can also add a lot of stuff on top of it and you can play with any materials here. And whatever you transfer, you just have to export once. And you just have to come here and render it so this workflow makes you know your workflow faster and you makes your 3d work really amazing uh, if you have any other questions about this workflow um, please write me at 3 at gmail.com or i'll comment below i'll help you guys and uh, thanks for watching this tutorial uh, if you like this tutorial please like subscribe and comment below thanks for watching guys